Atlas of the Heart by Brene Brown, which is a book about emotions. And what could be better about exploring our inner life than to look at the emotions that are going on within our inner being, within our within our self um, throughout the day, and uh, all of the various emotions and experiences that we have. In her book, she talks about 87 different emotions or emotional experiences that we have throughout our lives, and she's categorized them into groups um, based on um, reactions to certain situations that we have. So for this Wednesday night, my talk title is Finding Our Inner Sanctum. And we're going to take a look at some of the um, the aspects of of our inner life that Brene Brown talks about, um, about cultivating this place of um, deeper understanding of our emotions and our emotional responses. And so um, as we begin to understand our emotional responses and, and develop a greater self-awareness about how we habitually respond to the events in our lives, we can actually begin to reach a place of equanimity and peace that brings us closer to our true self, to our more authentic self, to our inner sanctum, that place of deep abiding peace within our being. In her book, she has talks about a concept that comes from Buddhism. And the concept is about is, is called near enemies and far enemies. And these relate to emotions in, in this way. Near enemies are those uh, emotions that appear similar to the desired quality or the desired emotion, but they are actually ones that begin to under, undermine it. Far enemies, on the other hand, are the opposite, and they're easily recognizable for what they are. For instance, um, a near enemy of, of compassion is pity. A far enemy of compassion is cruelty. Sometimes we can see, we can think we're being compassionate to somebody, but actually we're pitying them. And that can be hard for a person to distinguish between, between um, actual real compassion and this, this emotion that kind of looks down on somebody else. We pity someone, we're looking down on them, we're, we're thinking less than of them. But cruelty, on the hand, other hand, is easy to recognize. It doesn't take us by surprise at all. Near enemies are the stealth bombers of emotions. They're the ones that sneak in and really begin to undermine us in a way that we were not expected. We certainly didn't recognize it when it was happening. Let me give you a few other examples. The near enemy of loving kindness is sentimentality. It's being too, too lost in the emotions of the thing. It's similar. Loving kindness is having a, a feeling of of uh, well-wishing for somebody. Sentimentality is, is a little different than that. It, it, it is one that, um, that, again, relies on emotions that are not the things that we want to be experiencing. The far enemy of loving kindness is to wish somebody ill will, to do harm to them. That would be the opposite of loving kindness, or the far enemy of loving kindness. Easy to recognize, again. Sentimentality, not so easy to recognize when it happens. Um, a near enemy of love is attachment. Attachment is conditional love. It's not the unconditional love that we're seeking when we're seeking true love. Of course, a, a far enemy of, of love would be hate. Here's one, another Buddhist concept, equanimity, that um, balanced engagement with all life, where we um, are in a state of balance instead of reaction. So the near enemy of equanimity is indifference. The far enemy would be like totally out of balance, out of whack with that. So these are these are concepts that we can begin to explore because what happens is that the near enemies begin to stop us from cultivating meaningful connection. And we can't figure out why it is. The far enemies, real opposite things, they're not the ones that get in the way. We can recognize those. We can see those for when they're coming usually from a distance. It's the near enemies that we don't quite get. And most of the time, they're easy to recognize um, the far enemies, but it's not so easy to recognize the near enemies. And we get tricked into believing that everything is okay, that we're actually experiencing true emotions when we're, when we're in the, that field of near enemies. Um, up front, they seem okay, but they actually lead to more and greater disconnection. And because, you know, we're generally we think of, in, of emotions in relationship to others, 
but it's also emotions in relationship to our own self, our own inner knowing. And so when we begin to um, get a sense of what those near enemies are versus the far enemies, then we can actually begin to recognize them for what they are. The, um, the imposters, those near enemies, they can look like and feel like we're cultivating closeness. They can look like we're getting closer to somebody else. They can look like and feel like we are getting a deeper understanding of ourselves, but they really begin to sabotage the relationships and they actually leave us feeling more alone and in pain than before because what they do is they make us begin to doubt ourselves. They are so stealthy that we internalize the pain and we think that something's wrong with ourselves. Near enemies can feel like manipulation. They can feel like that uh, thing that we hear um, bantered around a lot lately, gaslighting. If you're not familiar with what gaslighting is, gaslighting is when when you point out that someone has done something wrong and that person then turns it back onto you. They I say that you're, um, you're overreacting. You misunderstood. Oh, it's just you. You're just the only one who feels that way. Nobody else feels that way. And those are what we call gaslighting. It's when, when you know somebody's done something and then they turn it around to where you begin to doubt yourself. And so when we begin to doubt ourselves, then, then we are, it's, you know, it's more self-sabotaging. But when we can begin to recognize that for what it is, that that, that that behavior is actually not the actual true emotion, the actual true, um, emotion that we're seeking, like love or compassion or equanimity or loving kindness, all of the, the things that we're actually seeking, but they're actually the, those near enemies that are undermining, um, our experience of those emotions. The near enemy, with with um, when we're work, when we're working with our emotions, the near enemy can feel like we're trying to control things. The far enemy can feel like we're walking away from it. So if we're walking alongside with our emotions, if we are we are accompanying our emotions along this journey, the spiritual path that we're on, and we get this feeling of like we need to control those emotions, then we're operating in a state of near enemy. We are operating in that state where we're close to getting to what we what we want, but we're we're doing something else to push it away. In her book, Brene Brown talks a lot about um, this concept of armoring up, and armoring up is one of the ways that we that near enemies show up. We harden ourselves to the experience that we're having. We harden ourselves to the emotions that we're experiencing, and the feelings that are going on there. And then we will, you know, we begin to think something's wrong with ourselves. Again, kind of like gaslighting ourselves in this case. We begin to internalize it and think there's something wrong with us. When we're when these near enemies are operating, like I said, the far enemies, they're easy to see. We can walk away from those. But it's the near enemies that are stealthy. They're the ones that are gonna that are sneaking up on us and um and operating in our experiences in a different way. So Brene Brown says that near enemies are states that appear similar to the desired quality, but actually undermine it. Far enemies are the opposite of what we're trying to achieve. And on the surface, near enemies of emotions or experiences might look or feel like connection. But ultimately, they drive us to disconnect from ourselves and from each other. When we are experiencing near enemies, we have a tendency to think it's the real thing. But in actuality, it is something that's undermining the true experience of the emotion. And it's hard to get to that place of deep connection with ourself, with our source, with our with others, when near enemies are working so hard in our lives to undermine the, um, the true sense of the true feeling that we're actually trying to get. And so um, the far enemies are completely the opposite enemies. But the near enemies are opposite in a sneaky little way. And so when we begin to look at emotions and actually begin to see what's really operating on in our lives, last Wednesday night, we took a look at identifying emotions in our bodies, where the different emotions are operating and where they're, what they might have to tell us, what, what kind of experience that we're thinking about, what, what is coming through with those emotions. This week, I'd like to take us into a different meditation about experiencing the opposite of emotions, the opposite kinds of emotions, the two different ones. And again, we're going to go back into our body because our bodies have an inherent intelligence within them that is always ready to speak to us when we just take the time and we listen to it. 
when we actually begin to tap into the various aspects of our lives and we see and sense and feel how those uh, emotions are working in us. You know, we can feel ourselves tighten up. We can feel our breathing pattern change. We can feel a, a tension in our head or um, a, a need to distract ourselves. That's a sneaky one. That's a near enemy. When we want to distract ourselves, when we want to stop, oh, I, this is silly. I, I just don't want to do with that. That's our, um, our uh, ego trying to keep us from having to deal with the issues that are at hand here. And so this, um, this meditation that we're going to go through tonight, again, it is about um, experiencing the opposites of emotions, the opposite ver um, way that emotions show up in us. So if you're ready to play along with me and uh, see what we can, can work through with this meditation, I invite you to just uh, begin to get your body settled. Settle yourself into your seat. Feel the seat beneath you. You might, uh, if you have your feet touching the floor, you might notice that connection between you and the earth. Even if you're on a second floor, you can still connect to that, uh, that grounded sense that the building allows you to feel. And just begin to um, slow your breathing down a little bit. It doesn't have to be really dramatic. Just uh, bring your awareness to your breathing. And for this meditation, you can keep your eyes softly opened or closed, whatever works for you. I tend to like to close mine because it stops that visual distraction from happening for me. If anything is moving about in the, the room or anything that catches my attention, it can distract me out of my uh, meditation. Again, our ego likes to, to shift us away from things if it can. And so either with your eyes open or closed, just settle into a comfortable position. And as you're settling in, just allow your senses to open to the environment and the sounds around you. Notice any sensations of warmth or coolness where the air touches your skin. Where your body touches the surface. Notice the gentle rise and release of your chest and belly as your breath comes in and goes out. And welcome the feeling of being alive in your body. Now take a moment to recall an, an intention for today's practice. Perhaps your intention is to remain alert and attentive. Perhaps it's to acquire a particular inquire into a particular emotion that has been or is currently calling your attention. Just begin to scan your consciousness and see if there's anything particular that is drawing its, your attention to it. And tonight we are tapping into our inner sanctum that part of us that is unchanging, that is complete beingness and well-being. This inner sanctum is always with us continuously and constantly, and we can return to it at any moment. More than a physical space within our body, it is a place of deep consciousness, a place of unchanging peace, a place of well-being.
And now notice any sensations in your face and your jaw or your mouth, your ears. Notice any sensation inside of your nostrils as the breath comes in and goes out. Notice any sensations around your eyes. Your forehead. The back of your head and neck. Your shoulders and arms and palms. Just welcome the sensations. Don't try to judge them or change them. Just acknowledge their presence. Welcome the sensations of your torso, your pelvis, sacrum, your entire body alive and vibrant. your hips, legs, and feet. Just welcome and acknowledge the natural aliveness of this body that you're inhabiting and all of the sensations radiating from it. Now just allow yourself to scan through your body and welcome in any emotion that's calling to you. Hear it, feel it. Recall an emotion that you are working with in your life right now. If no emotion is present right now, just bring to mind a recent emotion. Something that left you feeling not quite at complete peace. Where and how do you feel this emotion in your body? Are there any thoughts or images that accompany this emotion? Just welcome it into your experience, just as it is, without judging or trying to change it or fix it. And as you're sitting with this emotion, begin to bring your attention to an emotion that feels the opposite of it. And begin to notice if you are experiencing this emotion in your body as well. it doesn't feel like it's in your body right now, invite in a memory of this emotion and bring it fully into your body. Give it a place to be within your being. Now just rest with these two emotions your original emotion, and the one that is the opposite of it.
And now I want you to begin to move back and forth between those emotions. And as you do so, notice if you have any sensation or feeling in your body. Notice how each emotion impacts your body and how it settles in your mind. Again, without judging, without changing or fixing it, just allow both emotions to exist simultaneously within your body, within your being. And as you're experiencing how these two opposite emotions affect your entire body and mind, just let everything be there, just as it is. The emotion, the sensations, the thoughts, the feelings. Allow yourself to be with them, but not attached to them. Take a moment to marvel at what an incredible being you are with a mind and a body that allows you to feel such diverse sensations at the same time. Let's take a moment to delight in the simple feeling of well-being and awe. as you experience these two different emotions. And now before we close this meditation, just imagine yourself going about your day, each day, with the intention of welcoming these various emotions that arise as messengers. Notice that the gifts that they bring, even if the gift is just awareness. Know that there is a perfect response to each one of these emotions. And know that being in balance with these opposite forces creates a sense of harmony with yourself and with all of life. And so just take a moment and begin to gently move or stretch. Bring your awareness back to what is supporting you, the chair, the floor.
all the while try to maintain that sense of groundedness and ease. Keeping your heart opened and a sense of well-being moving throughout your body and mind. Just take a moment and silently give thanks for the opportunity to sit and welcome these opposite emotions. So each moment in our life, we have an opportunity to approach everything as a place for spiritual growth, a place for more awareness to be developed, a place to understand ourselves a little bit deeper. That place is always within us, and we just simply need to tap into it. That's how we get that true sense of our inner sanctum is when we have the willingness and the courage to go within and look. So one of our other spiritual practices is uh, one of my favorite, it's prayer. We call our prayer affirmative prayer or uh, its technical name is spiritual mind treatment. And so if you would, would you turn within once again while we open ourselves up to truth as it is revealed through the practice of prayer. And so settling into that place of peace, that place from which all thought, all emotions, all life emanates. I find that place deep within the heart of my being. I know that place surrounds me, fills me, is living through me, is showing up as me. This is the place of the divine, the indwelling place of spirit that creative intelligence that has brought forth everything into existence. That place from which all unconditional love and perfect peace emanates. I know that I am divinely connected to this place, to this peace, to this love, to this creativity, to this infinite intelligence. It is moving through my being. It is showing up as me. Because I know that there is only this one. I know that it not only exists within me, but within all of creation. With every person and everything that has ever been. For each of us is that perfect and unique manifestation of the one. endowed with all that it is. And so knowing this truth, I speak my word. My word of truth. My word of principle. My word of power. I know that there is a force that is continually moving forth into expression to each and every one of us. It is that creative love intelligence that has brought forth everything into existence, that is experiencing the world as each one of us. And I know within this perfection and wholeness, all things exist. All things exist. And while they may seem like opposites, they may seem contrary to our well being, there is a place for each and everything to operate. And as we become aware of our divine connection to that one source, that one presence, 
that one infinite intelligence. As we open ourselves to a greater awareness of how it is operating in our lives, our lives are transformed. We are no longer subject to the dualistic nature of these emotions. We can simply acknowledge them for what they are. Give them a place to be and release them from our experience. It is when we hold them in that situations in our lives are less than optimal. It is when we release them that we are free, that our lives are transformed, that we have a greater awareness of who we are. And all of this knowledge, all of this power, all of this presence resides within our inner sanctum. It is the truth of our being. And as we remember that and acknowledge that and allow it to live through us, we are transformed. And oh, how magnificent that is. I'm so grateful to know this. I'm so grateful to feel it. And I'm so grateful to see it operating in the lives of everyone around me. And so I just release this into the law that knows and does exactly what is needed at every moment. I let it be and I let it go. And so it is. Amen. Here at Center for Spirits Living Greater Las Vegas, we are a mission and vision driven community. We offer transformative educational opportunities, deep and meaningful moments of connection, uplifting Wednesday and Sunday services. We greatly appreciate your contributions that support the amazing work we're doing here in Southern Nevada. We have several easy ways you can contribute. We have text to give, Simply text the amount of your donation to our text to give number and you'll be prompted to enter your information. There's a link to our online donation page posted below this video where you can contribute by debit or credit card. And of course, you're always welcome to send a check to our office if that works better for you. All of your contributions go to support the great work that we're doing here in Greater Las Vegas community. I'm diving in Get ready My soul I'm diving in To the deepest kind of love To the sweetest kind of life Get ready, get ready, my soul. Everything I've ever done, everything I've ever seen, Everything I've lost or won Everything I've ever dreamed Has brought me here To the present moment Here To a new beginning Here And I'm seeing so clearly now Get ready, my soul I'm diving in 
get ready my soul I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love to the sweetest kind of life get ready get ready my Cause here I go Deeper, deeper, deeper than I've ever been before Here I go Closer, closer, closer to my sacred source Here I go Sacred source, get ready, my soul. I'm diving in, get ready, my soul. I'm diving in. To the deepest kind of love To the deepest kind of life Get ready Get ready My soul Get ready Get ready monthly publication, Science of Mind magazine, is a treasure to be read and contemplated. Along with in-depth articles, there is a day-to-day -day spiritual support to be gleaned from its daily guides. Licensed practitioner Lynn Frankenberger hosts Adventures in Faith on Zoom, and you're invited to join in. This is a weekly group discussion that focuses on those daily guides and how to apply them. Check Facebook and our weekly newsletter for more details. Keeping it real, keeping it real, keeping it real, keeping it real, keeping it real with Reverend Laura. Keeping it real, keeping it real, keeping it real, keeping it real, keeping it real with Reverend Laura. CSL Greater Las Vegas brings you much of your favorite spiritual music every Friday at 7 p.m. with Spiritual Soundscapes. Enjoy performances from CSL GLV vocalists along with special guest singers. It's music for your soul. Subscribe to the CSL GLV YouTube channel to get a convenient link sent to you for each musical performance. At CSL Greater Las Vegas, it is our mission to inspire spiritual discovery through community connection, exploration, and celebration. This mission supports the all-inclusive vision of Centers for Spiritual Living worldwide in which we envision a world that works for everyone and all of creation.